The Beef and Barnsey Show, brought to you by BowlersMart.com, trusted by bowlers around the world since 2004. By Lightning Strikes Bowl, home of Bowlers Mart Pro Shop. By Platinum Ford, drive the difference. By Fire Lake Bowling Center, 24 state-of-the-art lanes. By True Grit Coatings, drive on our passion. By Road to Grip, king of them all. By 900 Global, striking worldwide. Good morning and welcome back to the Beef and Barnsey Show. I am, as usual, Barnsey, joined by the unimitable Stuart Williams. Uh, coming to you live today with the MVP of the Elias Cup. Uh, this one could be good. You never know. How are, how are things today, Stu? Uh, not too bad, although Google just locked me out, so I'm just trying to log back in to set up <laughs> a couple of things on the back side of the show. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm getting this shirt out too, so we can uh, get yeah. a few more. Let people know we're here. Mm. There we go. And uh, uh, anything wow. interesting else interesting happened since Tuesday? Uh, um, no, I just. Uh, Oh, then I saw that you and I are uh, beef versus Barnsey in uh, fantasy football this week. So. Yeah, I saw that. I've um, fantasy football is not really turning me on this year. Hey, hey, well. Own four will do that. So. I'm not own four. No, did you win last week? Oh no, I won in the other league. I was oh. I, I was I was way on my way to being zero and eight. Um, in my two <laughs> leagues. Um, but I managed to avoid that embarrassment. So, well, actually, you have plenty of points in our league. So it, it's just actually the thing where if you play everybody every week, you'd be in the middle of the pack for sure at worst. Um, yeah, it, it's just it, – it's not really been – it's not really been ideal. Um, uh, some of the guys I uh, – like in, in, in the one league that I got invited into. Um, yeah. There we go. Uh, in the one league I got invited into, I uh, I drafted Travis Kelsey, which is my want in fantasy because tight end the trap. Yeah. What the fuck? Go away. <laughs> so yeah, tight ends are trash, and then they miraculously had to redo the draw, uh, redo the draft, and then hmm. everybody said, "We'll just pick the people we picked," and then somebody decided they wanted Kelsey instead of the person they picked. So that was cool. Huh. Nice. Yeah. So anyway, whatever. Um, I got Bijan Robinson out of it, so it hasn't that hasn't necessarily hurt, but Dallas Goddard doesn't want to tackle. It doesn't want to catch. So no. Um well. so anyway. Oh my god, here we go. Uh Chris <clears throat> Martin, regular contributor. Morning guys, roll tide. The tide yeah. rolled out more like. <laughs> uh go braves bowling first uh league tonight for winter season going to use the reality sounds like a good ball to start with yeah, um enough oil it's perfect no this was someone trying to buy a rental house uh um um no but i can put a video up later on today yeah I oh you have one I actually did some work here. Yeah. Huh. I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things are going a bit messy. Anyway, should we, uh, should we proceed yeah. with the show as we were planning on doing it? Yeah, uh, yeah we should. About fantasy football. Yeah. It's probably a lot more interesting too. So uh, our man today, he has eight titles. Uh, he has been known. Uh, he's had several nicknames. Uh, most of them positive, I think, or complimentary. He, he won the U.S. Open back at Garland, basically lapping the field and being the only left-hander, which is the one time, at least among his peers, that set him apart from uh, from everyone else. Uh, huge proponent for urethane. Just kidding. <laughs> Simulate Express. How's it going, gentlemen? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah. Uh, so, so back on uh, back on TV, back throwing strikes. Having a good time. Um, 
you you are a bit of a chip on the shoulder, motherfucker, though, aren't you? Really, you you, you <laughs> like it. You have you noticed. Like it. <laughs> so um, so the the PBA league gave you a couple of uh, a couple of uh, worthy opponents for you to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder. Um, you had Portland, who uh, who uh, kicked you to the curb. And then you had. Uh, I don't hold them accountable as much as the rest. Um, <laughs> well, it is a little tough. You retired that year. Yeah, that that oh. and and Prather was on his high, and we had first round pick that year, so we we grabbed him right away, and he turned out as good as we expected. And uh, mm-hmm. at, right after we won that year, I went back to the house with my buddies because everyone came that year. A few of my friends, my wife. We had Jackson at the time and uh, we went back to the house and we're celebrating afterwards. And I looked at everybody and said, let's enjoy tonight, boys, because this is it. I'm going to be off this team next year. Oh, you're crazy. No way. No way they could let you go. Sure enough. We know how that ended up. So, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I was really just teasing on that one. Yeah, I was just. And then. uh and then uh then we had the expansion and you and uh you and Sean got together and i would say that you and Sean might have the most complicated relationship in bowling you ain't kidding man <laughs> cuz you're yeah. either 100% yay or 100% nay and there <laughs> isn't very much in between <laughs> I, I don't know i kind of feel like that's just that's how Sean works, man. He just, uh, what, what am I supposed to say? Yeah. <laughs> I thought he wanted me. I thought he liked me. And then there was a conversation had between the guys that did not involve me and again, got kicked to the curb. Um, I can only guess as to what happened, but obviously we know I had a terrible year. Um, I had a bad year the year before too, and still, thought I performed pretty well in the league. They are two very separate entities in my opinion. Um, yeah, there should be some weight held accountable to the guys that are in the league from the season. And uh, I'm fortunate that the rules are the way they are and that I'm still eligible the past couple of years. But that building, me, that atmosphere, um, I – always feel like I'm going to be an asset to a team. So, yeah, I'm always surprised when I get let go. Well, then you uh, th- then then you've got um, picked up by um, what can only be described as the uh, the misfit team. That's us. Um, in, in the past, for sure. It is. It is um, Johnny has been a little all over the map. Um, I think at times he's thought that you got pins for seniors. Um <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you guys drafted me last year. They should have already learned that it didn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah. we won't go there. But, uh, but, but anyway, this year it seemed like Johnny had a bit more of a plan um, overall. Um, no, but I mean, in fairness, he he was the only person who decided to pair two lefties together. Um, you and Stern a room together. Um, I think that it it kind of made a little more sense this year than in the past. I know that people looked at the rankings. I don't know what other way that it could be looked at, really, um, when you're comparing the teams. Um, But talk a little bit about, like, the camaraderie that you guys were able to create. Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of what we built the team based on was – the chemistry aspect of it and the fact that, I mean, there's been, there's been teams in that league that have been really stout with a lot of really good players and haven't gotten it done. No offense to yourself, but you're part of one of them. Um, so we really went for the, the, the aspect of brotherhood of chemistry of friendships. Who, who's in the we, room? Is there anyone helping Johnny draft? So from my understanding, it's, it's a collective team effort. He's, he's not really paying a lot of attention week in and week out as to what's going on out there. But what I do know guessed over the years, 
Yeah. yeah, what I do know is that before I got let go, there was a an agreement with the team that they were not going to have two lefties on a team and they were not going to go after a second lefty. And as soon as I got released, there was phone calls being made back and forth and that kind of went out the window. And it was pretty unanimous that they all said that if I was still available, that they would take that risk and they, they wanted me on board whether we had two lefties or not. From the outside, we were pretty surprised that they didn't pick Russo just because Parker and Russo seemed to be so tight. Yeah, um, he was he was on on the board. And he was um, available, and they picked you above him. Yeah, so it kind of tells you they, they were a little skeptical of the two lefty thing. Russo was on their board, but if they were to go after him, it, it probably would have been if he was there – for their second pick, which wasn't going to happen, but um, it was pretty late. Yeah, so. if that it, it was interesting because I know that I know that Timmy and Charlie wanted me back on Portland as well, and uh, they've wanted me back since they had to drop me, and it's never worked out. But um, I was getting texts and phone calls from both of them as well, and Charlie was convinced I wasn't going to fall that far. And uh, if they decide to go Russo's route because of Parker and his relationship instead of me. Mm -hmm. I, I do go to, I think, to Portland. So um, just crazy the way things worked out, really. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's um, it's like you say, there's there's a different... I, I think that team chemistry is a little bit overblown at times because I think that every team who wins has great team chemistry and every team who loses has terrible team chemistry and that's just mm -hmm. like, look at the Ryder Cup. Like... The European team, oh my god, they're the greatest team ever. Like two years ago, they lost 19-9. Yeah. Like so for, for us, I think what set us apart was the for example, the call on the year thing. That was mm -hmm. that was something that I had brought up to the team and I suggested because we kept being the the second match and the 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 middle of the lane, and we know the left and right lane and how how bad they are, how, how different they are. And being the second match, I, I figured, you know, these guys are not comfortable. They're not confident. They don't got their legs under them. Main, speaking mainly of Frank and, and Sterner. And, and I said, guys, you both like to, to kind of trap the lane a little bit more and get right and just kind of jam it. You can do it with a purple and it'll keep you in fresh parts of the lane. Uh, you know, we have a match in front of us every time. We had it on the step ladder. We were going to have it again on this in the second the second round. And I said, "Why not get into the fresh part of the lane?" Yeah. So I've had I've had two previous uh, interviews. One yet last night, and one with Chuck. I've been saying unanimous because I didn't know if he wanted to be in this or not based on what had happened with me and the Pounders. But uh, me and Dicky had a conversation and. Uh, I assume he is now comfortable with being being let in, but um, I've been saying unanimous or, or anonymous person, and um, we had the, this conversation. He said, "You got you got two guys that could throw purples. I don't know why you're not taking advantage of that." And it made sense enough to. I said, "Yeah, I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be confident." And yeah, I agree that that that's what would do it. And so when he said that. I went to the team and said, you know, what do you guys think of that? And the, the trust, it was there in the belief. And once we got through one show with it and we had BJ on, on, on board for the finals as well. And uh, I, I just think it just kind of snowballed and the belief and the confidence and call it the chip on the shoulder. They, it, it just kind of snowballed on into the whole team and, it was, I mean, yeah, it was a Cinderella story, but it just, one thing after another, it was the perfect formula. Yeah, we have a couple questions here. Okay. And if you haven't watched our show very often, guys are uh, honest to a fault. They take shots at everyone, just like they take them at us. So uh, why the switch to 14 pounds? Uh, trying to even out the, uh, the forearms. Yeah, so originally the goal was to hook it more. Pretty simple. Um, I tested a 14 pound purple back in February. I stopped in Buffalo between stops. Um, we drilled one up. We compared it to the 15. 
we threw out 32 or 34 feet. I can't remember. And it out hooked the 15 by a full arrow. So that was kind of all I needed to see. And I said, any help I'm going to be able to get to kind of be able to shape it right to left the way butters can. And I mean, we all know I, I'm just not going to be able to do that, but I have to try. And so Your goal speed's about four miles per hour higher. It does <laughs> make it tricky. So yeah, it was, I noticed that ironically, I don't feel, I don't feel like I can't throw it slower um, for me anyway. I thought, I thought you were going to stop let's, then for a minute. Let's I say don't relative. feel. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, if I can get down to, you know, 17, 17 and a half, that's, that's turtle speed for me. <laughs> so, there we go. Uh, Tim Pfeiffer, why are you watching? I don't need you on here. Yeah. Now this is the, the ultimate irony is, is there were three urethanes on your team. And uh, and two lefties, and you went, oh well, who's the other righty that threw it? And uh, <laughs> the irony is that's that's not how it was at all. Uh, all the righties throwing urethane, all the lefties throwing reactive, which yeah. Yeah, turned I out to be it. good team chemistry because Parker doesn't particularly like it either. Right he's, right, he's come around on it, but he's got a little the same thing. Yep, he's a little bit speed dominant, yep. and uh, and in this era of massive urethane carry down. It's trapped <clears throat> a lot and doesn't have your rep rate to yep. go with it. So, um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's pretty wild. Andy Patterson, he's uh, for okay. those who don't know, uh, yeah, he played in the region has has a few wins here in the Southwest region. Brian, great bowling, glad glad to see you back on TV. Question: Is Bayside Bowl more conducive to the left side? It seems like the left-handers are drafted higher and put in the anchor more often outside West. I mean, I, I think so. I, I know so on the high side, for sure. The old, the old bay, um, that new bay, it's the, I mean, those lanes are awfully new. I don't, That's I don't know. That's funny you say that. Really... Why? Because Jacob and Jasper hate the old side. It's weird. I mean, I, I mean, I, Jasper, I, got, I don't know. I won a title over there. So obviously. Yeah, I, I mean, y Jasper know. doesn't want a ball anchor on. I mean, he, he's not thrilled with doing it but he'll yeah. do it on the on the new side um but on the old side he doesn't like it at all i think his ball hooks even earlier on the other side yeah and, yeah it's just, it so just for those two guys the urethane is not as good i think on the high side which is probably part of the reason why you like it better see uh, that's the irony with my game is i do like i like early hook um because i like to see my ball shape as close to me as possible. We all know that that's what you need to trap the lane. So the, the, the catch 22 with that is if it's too much and my ball gets offline, instead of just heavy rolling, it completely moots the point. And then I get trapped into feeling like I have to stretch my angles left, right to left. And it kind of defeats the purpose completely. Well, early hook does, you know, it, it helps the one thing that, uh, that you struggle with most and it slows your ball down. <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly and so it gets it to pick up so uh, um <clears throat> when you were um the only thing i found strange and then so somebody says isn't it a benefit having one lefty play fourth and a, and a second lefty play fifth it doesn't necessarily need to be a lefty um it is a benefit having two guys on kind of the similar game plans mm -hmm. um so having a guy throwing it straight and then having a guy hook the whole lane doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, no, you're basically so, two guys that are both striking. <laughs> is where it really helps. Yeah, yeah. but you're but both at the same, up. But yeah, but yeah. at the same time, when you have quite a lot of dead time in between mm -hmm. shots, it's kind of nice just to. But what I was going to say was, um, in one of your matches, Johnny flipped BJ to the fourth spot. Mm -hmm. um, that was against us. Yeah. yeah. What was kind of the thinking there? So they were changing uh, every run a little bit, and Parker was feeling it more than anyone else. And when we went back over there for our match and we got our one shot on each lane, Parker washed out on the left lane and barely touched the head pin on the right lane. And we knew in our back of our heads that it was always going to be a possibility because we did like BJ's look. And then, of course, BJ picked that show to, to have his timing be a little off, and he's steeped pretty much the whole show and airmailed a few. So um, it obviously didn't really work out. 
Yeah, the they were different on the right too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I came back after the practice. Of it, Parker and I did. got the goal first. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we threw a four bagger before BJ opened in the ninth, the one game. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I mean, had they been flipped, it's a triple in an open, and so I don't know if it necessarily hurt us, uh, but there was obviously a reason for it. Some random fan says, yeah, "Love the energy you brought." Uh, well, you. thank you. I mean, whoever you are, <laughs> and I appreciate you, Linda. Yeah, it was nice to be back on TV. It was yeah, it's been a while since since I've been on a single show. Obviously, um, just wanted to take advantage of of having the opportunity, and and uh, just felt like I need to prove to myself more than others that that I still had it, that I still belong, and that 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 fire is still inside. So this, this ties into this comment, why I had to prove my, felt like I had to prove myself again. I feel like PBA tour champions have nothing to prove, but I, I think what you said is probably the most important part. It wasn't about proving it to other people. <clears throat> right. You know, yeah. You, um, you needed to believe it again. And then exactly good bar reaction with it, that kind of environment. And uh, you dove right in and uh, yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, it worked out great. I, Drilled, I drilled that ball actually there and uh, drilled it for the old bay. And they were just a little different than the prior year. And it ended up looking fantastic in the new bay. And obviously with that comes the confidence. And we all know that what I was determined to do anyways. And uh, like I said, I just wanted to take advantage of the opportunity because it's been a few years and, it's been a rough go for me. Uh, we all know the struggles I have combating the urethane traffic. And it's just, it was just nice to be back on TV, not really see any urethane traffic and just be able to bowl and, and, you know, sling them again. Well, the most important question we've had so far, who's the best golfer among you three? It definitely isn't me. Uh, it would be Barnsey, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it. I'm probably the only one of three of us that plays more than once a year, I would guess. Uh, yeah, I, I play sure probably three to, <laughs> three to six rounds a year. And uh, I I can shoot in the 80s. It's just you got to practice like anything else, and I don't play enough. So, Yeah, uh, not for me. We have a super chat from our uh, super fan, Adam. Uh, my coach Vinny has put together a – uh, putting a league together at Carolier, my arsenal is reality, reality check, Zen Master, Helios, and Phase Four. Yeah, that's okay, Adam. I mean, it depends. Is it is it a sport league or is it just a house shot league? Because if it's a sport league, you might you might have um, a couple of balls that are a little bit too smooth together. But other than that, if it's on the house shot and you're left and with you being left handed, um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. I like the I like the Phase Four. I think that's going to be that's like. For me, it was that was the, almost the most painful for me personally of all the balls that got kicked out. Um, yeah, I felt like that was the best one, the most unique one. I mean, most match. people felt like the UFO alert was the biggest loss. It just wasn't for me. It, yeah, agreed. I, you could put the Helios and put something in that's a little bit uh, cleaner, flippier, perhaps. Mm-hmm. That would be the one, the one change. Um. Uh, 2024, no urethane traffic anymore, right? I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't think so. Um, I don't know what these companies are uh, attempting to do. <clears throat> I, I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, I haven't. I've I've heard some uh, some rumors from your side. I haven't heard any rumors on our side yet. Is like, is Butters going to try to throw a spy? Like, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. Yeah, but. I mean, I think they're going to come up with something that's. I mean, what I, your thing was before. I really hope Butters is going to throw the spy because <laughs> I think that it's going to be like not that effective as long as they put some oil on the lane. Like he's going yeah. to be great on cheating with it. Yeah. But like if they put any sort of length in it, I don't think it's going to work. But if he tries it, I think it's going to be even worse than him throwing the urethane. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that on the patterns that are that have a four in front of them, um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually be a factor again. I mean, just based on, on the, the history of, of my career. Mm-hmm. Um, 
all my titles have come, all eight have come on patterns between 39 and 43 feet. So I'm not, I'm See, not, exact, I'm, I'm not a secret. Enough. I'm old enough to remember when you were like 30 pounds. I mean, it's not like you're heavy, but you're about 30 to 35 pounds lighter and you were throwing the natural. See, I'm yeah. old enough. I was, I was, I, I was close to an OG. But I never won though. I never won. On no, I know. But Jacob won about 12 titles with a booyah. That was a 78 hardness ball. So I, I don't think, I don't think your thing is going away on your side of the lane. I do I think, think combined with some volume adjustments, it would be minimized. Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I'm trying to keep an open mind. I'm not going to assume that I'm just magically going to be a huge factor again. But I don't know. I mean, it's obviously going to change something. Some, some things are going to change. Uh, any tips and ball suggestions for 2021 Wolf? Um, <laughs> That's for fine. me personally, <laughs> I don't like urethane on Wolf because I think that the pattern's too cliffed on the gutter so in the past when we bowled on wolf even when it had been shorter it, as soon as the oil slightly went down the lane it was more angle i think wolf plays more like original cheetah than cheetah does now like for me it's one that i get really steep at the gutter and that's where i feel like the scores come from um for, for me um but i don't know about you guys <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i and i agree with that it does it does depend <laughs> i don't i don't really know um i'm i haven't had a whole lot of success on wolf but we did have that that one year in shawnee it was that that might have been 21 actually <laughs> yeah i think i think it's only recently that wolf's been stretched for the longest time wolf was 32 yeah right um and quick quick story Talking about Shawnee and Wolf. This was a bit one of those um, not meeting your heroes type of moments. No oh boy. <laughs> I bowled next to Walter Ray on Wolf that year. Okay. And Walter had the shiniest um, Rhino Pro Gold remake I've ever seen. <laughs> and he was standing dead on the gutter and throwing it. And that motherfucker wouldn't hook at all. It just kept going dead straight, right? And uh, we're all sanding the shit out of urethane balls because, you know, that's what you do. And Walt's like, I just don't understand why you use it that much surface. And we're just stood there going, we just don't understand why you're using a shiny ball. <laughs> and like, and it was just like old school versus new school. Yeah. Well, Walt and Muster Bowl for about two games going, I mean, have you seen the graph? How does the ball not hook there? And we're just like, this guy's won 50 titles. Is he for real? <laughs> like, none of us can dream of ever being as good as he is. But are you for real? Yeah. Like, it was just, it was just like one of the most, it was one of the most mind bending, like, learning about the game. A lot of the time is totally pointless. Just being better than everybody else is just such a better option. And like, and it's at times like that you realize that like Walter Ray didn't trick his way there or like know something that somebody else didn't know. He was just better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, he simplifies it as much as anybody that smart can simplify a game. It, uh, yeah, it, it just, it's very. It was just absolutely wild to me when he's just going. But the graph says there's no oil there. Why doesn't it hook? Oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. It was hard to believe that that was, that was actually the words coming out. So, uh... Uh, I'll be honest. Your boy, uh, your boy Rick Hamlin said the same thing. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, they're both wrong. Yeah. Um... <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, Walter didn't believe in it... weight holes until I... Rick. Watching Rick work with Walter was uh, was actually very interesting because Walter would never do anything if it was Rick's idea. So literally, <laughs> Rick told me up front what he was going to tell him, and it was the opposite of what he wanted him to do to see if he could get him to do what he wanted him to do. And it worked. 
<laughs> as long as he just told him something else, then Walter would start thinking and go, yeah, that won't work. Yeah, no kidding, it won't work. That's what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> the opposite way. Lewis, uh, what's going on, buddy? <laughs> friend of the channel. I guess I guess Luis did the 50 strike challenge and won, so good for him. Good work. Uh, He's got that Ron Hicklin did it, and he uh, and he drafted in EJ to do it with him. Oh yeah, I mean, can anybody not break the fifty strike challenge when you have EJ do it? <laughs> did EJ they do it? Could break the fifty strike challenge bowl on the U.S. Open pattern. <laughs> I've watched Hicklin bowl. If he got to fifty percent, they had to be really easy on the left. <laughs> uh, well, no, what he did was it would be like one, two, miss a few. So, like, he'd, he'd throw a strike, he'd throw another strike, and then he'd miss. And then he'd be like, see what EJ's doing here? I see, like, EJ uh, throw, like, a five or a six bag. Ah, <laughs> uh, wasn't exactly one-to-one. -one. Yeah, not so much. Yeah. He goes, we need ten more strikes, EJ. And EJ goes, okay, and then peels off seven. Bang, off bang, 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 yeah. bang. <laughs> it's so ridiculous watching EJ. EJ is a very much a, a closet gym rat, mm. the bowling equivalent. He doesn't, he acts like he's not. He acts like he doesn't. He plays dumb. Yeah, there you go. He's very good at playing dumb. He, EJ very, threw I don't eight. care, whatever. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, okay. he, is, he, 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 he is until he gets a couple of drinks in him, and then he's very happy <laughs> to tell you that he's the smartest person in the room. <laughs> Dom's trapped him a couple of times like that. Dom, Dom's closet. He he's he's <laughs> dove into a lot of people that way. <laughs> I don't know if it's closet anymore, boys. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Adam, I appreciate the super chat, mate, but we know nothing about. I don't even know where the, the LBC is going to be. So yeah, that looks like an okay arsenal. I mean, I think you've got most bases covered. Um, but yeah, once we know what the pattern is, it'll give you a better idea of what may or may not work so also the half of those balls might be discontinued by then <laughs> so we'll try mate but i mean just like the the lbc is so far away don't worry about that now yeah um lbc going back to hawthorne do i have any good memories yeah everywhere except the tv pair avoid nine and ten <laughs> <laughs> literally the highest one of the highest scoring centers it was built the same time as north rock as springfield uh there's a handful of other ones with the phenolic pin decks and the and and Amblaine. that place hooks off the gutter the pins fly around scores were always super high everywhere except the tv pair it was 235 minimum to make the show there every year and then the show with the first one to 215 one <laughs> it always made it look weird uh, but yeah, that, that place, Bill Spigner's old place, uh, they sold it. So I, you know, I have, well, we haven't been there in a, in a minute. So hopefully it's still, uh, still the same high end center that was when we left. Go, go. Can we go back to the league real quick? Dude? I don't know. I haven't watched a lot of the shows. I was traveling that one day, um, when I was supposed to be on and I caught bits and pieces, but that, that was neither here nor there. Did you guys by chance talk about Maldi? I mean, that kid impressed me. Yeah. I, I oh when we yeah, when he uh yeah well, he had the, the shot off, to win. The double roll off. I mean yeah. Man, I, I was just flat out impressed, honestly. Um I didn't know if you guys had talked about anything other than it's it's a little difficult for us because um it's not really a shock to us because we bowl. I bowl against Maldi every almost every that's week. Fair. So, so, like for me, him doing those things isn't. That's just what he does. Like so, like I guess when I watched so, it back, um, he I, he looked nervous. I was about he, to say, I'm actually more shocked that he didn't just put you guys in the grave. To be honest, <laughs> he looked. He's yeah, a different honestly, guy than he was say little, five six years bit. ago. Yeah. And he used to be a little higher anxiety you know or less comfortable in those situations and uh i remember norm calling his number and i i i was i felt really comfortable with the fact he was going to throw a great shot there and 
because he's just he's comfortable in his own skin these days. And yeah. And so I was surprised rather than ooh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I was hoping that didn't happen. I was like, I was shocked that he that he didn't strike, but then to make the 310 yeah. and strike and then strike again. Exactly. Those are big stones there. Yeah. That was for sure it was. Yeah. Um is it when he when he had to throw the one shot after the ninth and tenth. On TV, they catch TJ looking at him and saying, um, you ready? You want it? And Maldi, like, he he paused for a second, and he looked a, a little unsure. And he looked down, he looked back up. He's like, yeah, I got this. And, like, it was like he turned it right off, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to do this. And uh, it was it was cool to watch back. And, uh, yeah, I just – I was – I was – I enjoyed it. Like I was a fan in that moment. And then I had to like get back in it. And I'm like, all right, well now I got to do my job, but <laughs> I was just, I just enjoyed it, man. It was, it was cool. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you have a very different, um, uh, experience bowling against that team than I do. Um, <laughs> because, uh, Tommy got up in the 10th frame when they played us and struck out. And, uh, we went to a roll off cause we just bowled two ninety nine, And, um, Tommy was getting ready to bowl and Norm just walked up to him, shoved him back and goes, I've got this. <laughs> Norm was like, the set was in the two hole. It's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Tommy's just thrown three strikes on that lane. Most people would vote him Mr. Clutch and now you just tell him to get out of your way. <laughs> <laughs> Norm went yeah. up through the shot, did the whole act. Ironically, um, when we won in 19, we bowled Dallas in the semis. And yeah. uh, Wes, I can't remember who went first it, for them. It was probably Norm. And they both struck. And then it was Bill. He blew, he blew out a 7-10 to strike. I got up. I struck. And then for the third round, Tommy got up. And he 210, I believe. 210 or 2810. Mm-hmm. Eight or seven, and Kyle didn't even need to strike. He got up and rung a ten to make the finals. That was the year we bowled you guys, and uh, yeah. so Tommy getting eight there and then getting seven against us again. I was like, man, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, right. Like <laughs> you don't expect that. Except both times in the league, I was on the team that he did it against. I'm like, dude, this is like deja vu. So, Chris. Um, I'm not answering this question at the minute because I've done a video and I'll have it up later today. Um, it's it's another strong ball. It's a bit more continuous than the gem is kind of the... I quite like it from what I've seen, but it's another monstrously strong ball. Um, so, yeah. Um, I should have the video finished up today and I'll have it up later. <laughs> Frank, this is something that I can 100% be confident in saying that's not happening. Nope. Marshall has a bold in almost 30 years now. Just so you know about figures on the pulse. (laughs) Marshall called Anthony Lavery um, on the Tuesday, I think it was, after we'd won and asked, have you been bowling much? (laughs) <laughs> and he goes well i won yesterday <laughs> yeah yeah so, we both, it was like that yeah uh, yeah it's just it's just funny like it, it yeah it's just like they're so distant from the game at times and it's like i don't know why they wouldn't be like right. how would they like you know Ma- like you're saying marshall hasn't bowled for 30 years like He's bowling like, his first got, league, his first league, league in like yeah, thirty years this this season. Yeah, he, he's bowling a little football. bit of league because he used to bowl up at Lava Lanes there in Medford, yeah. Yeah. and Brian and I opened that center. But that was back in, in the mid two thousands. You know, uh, he hasn't bowled on tour since I've been on tour, and that's mm-hmm. been a minute. Uh, I think his last title was ninety four or ninety five, I believe. So. Agreed, Rick. I agree. I, I'm I'm going to be the contrarian. It's not <laughs> better to watch. I, I like, love it. I the love players. It. The players' reactions are better to watch. But you've got to like this goes back to what Stu and I've been talking about for a while. If we went one frame, one frame, 
like the Weber Cup, you have time to react after every shot versus when you bowl in the right lane, you can't really react that. You can't get super pumped because you got to throw the next shot in 20 seconds. Mm. And so, yeah, I just think, I like to me, just the, let's just quickly get off the rails with this. Like the one frame, one frame, I think is so much better because I think it gives the high seed a huge advantage, which they're supposed to have. Because if you get to throw the first shot every frame, like you set the table every single frame, not every mm -hmm. other frame. That's a fantastic point. And on top of that, I think that you get way more interactions with the fans because you throw a shot and it goes back and forth, back and forth. I think that's part of why the PBA League's good because mm -hmm. one team throws, then the other team throws. Like when we bowl the – that's why the qualifying to me was just a bit of a shit show when you were doing the two, 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 two because it was just weird. It took forever. Mm -hmm. And there was no real like – you weren't like focused in on your guy. Because it was so slow. And then the other team was, it was just, I I, I think it would have been way better. We, we, we could have basically bowled just regular bowl and one lane etiquette and just bowled two game matches in the same amount of time we took to bowl match play. And close. Games. Except like, the, uh, our Tiro's team would have always been further behind. But yeah, but. <laughs> He says, Rick said, I didn't get to watch from it, but uh, Ryan never missed. Congrats on what must have been a dominating performance. Parker had a lot of good stuff to say about you. So that's nice. Oh, thank you. Um, I have to ask you two this. Um, what, what, what's it like bowling outside? Well, I never been which year. <laughs> I, I remember when they bowled the coolest outside one is a hundred percent the World Cup in Egypt when they had the pyramids in the background. Oh, mm. that's cool. Now it was as much of a pain in the ass. It wasn't quite as much of a pain in the ass as Reno because they knew that it was going to be sandy. So they yeah. kind of like mitigated for it. But the photos of that World Cup are so cool when the guy's holding, I think, I think Jens Nickel won, and they're holding the trophy up and you can see the pyramids in the background. Actually, it wasn't Jens Nickel. It was a different German guy. But um, but yeah, that that was cool. Eh. One well, would we're argue... still talking about it. That's the only the the two things that were not a disaster was we're still talking about it, and everyone finished exactly where they qualified. I was about to make that exact point. Yeah, it, but it, yeah, the you, the scores were horrific. Linda was on that show. And we basically drilled the ball just in case she made it all through through all five matches. And being outdoors, you know, maybe they might hook a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. By the fifth frame of game one, <laughs> she was at the ball that was the just in case. I have, I don't think you'll ever get to it, but we'll have it there in case. And uh, yeah, it was, it was an absolute train wreck from that standpoint. Uh, Jeremy, um, Thanks for the super chat. Let's see if we can help you out a little bit. He says, if I lay my palm flat on the table, I'm getting a lot of bruising and blisters on my middle finger nail and the right side of the finger. What can I do to help eliminate this? Well, that sounds like you're a little stretched in the ball. Mm -hmm. um, now, stretch could be solved in two different ways. It could be that your span is just too long, or it could be that you just don't have enough relief uh, uh, reverse on this finger. So like for me, my finger doesn't bend very much uh, because of arthritis. So I have a lot of reverse on my middle finger. Um, shout out to Dom for yelling at me to stop being an asshole um, when I had nowhere near enough reverse. Um, I think Chris can probably testify the same. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it is. And in general, you're going to move the pitch towards the issue. Mm -hmm. So um, if you go in and show them, um, if they say it's one of those things and there's nothing they can do, just find a different pro shop operator. Yeah. I guess it's a little short. In, in, and and if it's not short, if your crease of your finger is not in the middle of that hole, at least. Uh, well, it'd be a yeah. little long, Chris. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you need to yeah. shorten it a little bit or add yeah. reverse. I was That's about right. to say like yeah yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> He's getting old. Just what I mean. You can't read my mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say the exact opposite thing of what you need to do. Yeah, but... yeah let me oh, wrap it up by hard. confusing the issue completely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Ryan, how do you feel about the bowlers in the UBA? Any uh, people on tour? I mean, the UBA is house bowling. It's it's a whole different animal. Um, the only comparisons are the atmosphere is somewhat similar to the league. Um, there's a lot of hooping and hollering. But uh, besides the guys that are already known that do bowl and participate in the UBA, do I think others could be on tour? Uh, probably not. Uh, I mean, they're, they're proud. They're happy to be house bowlers. Most of them are, are very content with that. And it's just, that's a different animal. My take most of the time when people ask this is if they wanted to be on tour, they could be on tour, they would be on tour. Or have tried at some point. So, all right. Very few that are in such a great position that they go, I mean, a lot of people say it, but very few are actually in the position at 25, 23 years old to go, nope. I am making way too much money to follow my dreams. So, <laughs> so can can I uh, can I add something? Because we're talking about team bowling. So, um, yep. uh, the World Bowling League um, had a press release today with a keynote. Very cool graphics. Um, there was one part of it, and I, I mean, maybe it's a little mean to me because I haven't really watched it, and I did do the thing where you chug through to find the one thing that's a little crazy. Um, if this works, this will be the greatest thing in the history of bowling. But what? one of the things that they always like to seem to want to do is change the scoring system. We're doing this by completely redefining how the game is played and viewed by yeah, turn it up. in multi-million dollar price pools. Let's start with our scoring system. Is it not coming We're through? We're flipping the traditional count-up system from 0 to 300 and flipping it completely upside down, starting from 300 and counting down to 0. This new scoring system will build suspense throughout the game's progression. <laughs> this way, every throw will have the potential to change the game, keeping the viewers on the edge of their seats. Moving beyond individual, I was, teams, we're I was a little disappointed that he didn't really go more into how that was going to keep me on the edge of my seat and how one shot changing the game is different when you're adding up or subtracting. Exactly. I wasn't really sure on any of those things, but really enjoyed it. <laughs> and those graphics were banging him stood in front of that big screen. Um, I don't understand it. So, but but anyway, um, the 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 concept was first floated um, by what was the guy's name? Andy Orem. Andy Orem, yeah. So the concept was um, that basically um, they would go and you would have it'd be like the ATP tour, principally uh, the tennis. And that you'd have like high end events, medium events, and lower end events, like challenge tour events, whatever. And that they would go to locations around the world um, that, um, that, you know, like, um, so like they'd have it in the mall in Dubai. They'd build two lanes or they'd bowl at the top of the, 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 uh, they, they had a, a vision of having it in the Tokyo Tower and, Stuff like this. So it'd be like monstrously massive places that would never have bowling lanes and it would be like huge and everything would be cool. And everything he says about it sounds fun, but it doesn't seem that practical. Now, if they can make it practical, it's going to be game on. Because like I say, they're, they're, they're really trying to you know, shoot for the rainbow. It just seems like it, it's, yeah. it, it's a little unrealistic, some of their thoughts. But I guess 
every um every first thing that anybody tried was unrealistic at some point i guess um but yeah some of these things seem like it's like wow but if they do pull it off i mean it'll be amazing i mean if if it's backed by the shake and kuwait and all that i don't know I mean, it's certainly much like the live tour. There's enough money there to do what they want. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't dove into enough of the rest of it to know, to really accurately comment on it. Competition wouldn't be bad. It's rarely bad. Uh, it makes both sides step up their game a little bit. But, uh, you know, we'd love to see Bolero invest a little bit more money into the tour and and as a as the high end product and and flagship of their of their efforts for uh, league bowling etc but uh you know we'll see what happens <clears throat> i spent a lot of time sleep my sleeping time trying to figure out that keynote this morning you guys are going to be born for tens of millions of dollars so the scoring system matter no but it just hits it just hits the it hits every keynote that they make so it worked out real well when they changed the scoring system last time. Like we got <laughs> millions and millions of people watching bowling because the scoring system's the problem. It's just like the world championships in Dubai. Oh, we'll change it. Uh, was it in Dubai? No, it was in Abu Dhabi. Oh, we're going to change it. We're going to have these groups. And it's going to be so much better. I mean, that lasted one world championships. Like right. they just are all over the map. Like, it, Yeah. It just, even if they come up with a good idea, they don't do it for long enough to know whether it actually is a good idea or not. They don't collect enough data. That's exactly what I said, Rich. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, is the thing that's cool about darts is people go and they, and the, the, the event is almost first and the darts is secondary almost. The darts is used as a vehicle for people to have a night out and a good time watching it. And I think that that's somewhat the format of the PBA league when it's up there. It's an event that gives people an opportunity to go out and have a good time. The events that we play year in, year out, like we need to, I think that the experience at the bowling center needs to be better for the fans and that, and I'm not saying I know what that, that looks like. I'm just saying that we spend a lot of time trying to change the game rather than trying to change the fan experience. Um, so whatever, I, I'm not being paid to do it. So I probably shouldn't criticize, but at the same time, that's kind of how I see it going the way wrong. Um, yeah, I guess I could get back to it. Um, that was Tina's project and, uh, she, we haven't really, uh, we haven't really got that back up going. Yeah, Reno, definitely dusty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna guess, Jack and Tom, 0815. You're not under 50. Uh, I think extreme reactions to shots, screaming with teeth, make us look and sound like chimpanzees. Dick Earl, Mark Walter didn't need to do that to attract fans. Neither did Pete, to be honest. We also had three channels, so there wasn't anything else to watch. <laughs> we were the lead in to wide world of sports. If you were a sports guy, you pretty much bowling was was your option until until whatever collection of <laughs> ABC decided to show that day. And you know, I, we're in a different world. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I I appreciate you. You guys have you, you you guys come on the channel a lot and everything else. But the biggest complaint that we hear as players is that the players don't have as much personality as those guys did back in the day. <laughs> and yeah, and then we get called chimpanzees when we show. So some. I mean, I just they think seem to that, think everybody was Marshall and Pete Weber back in the day. Yeah, and I and but and I also think that I I I but, also hear a lot that back in the day, the lanes were way harder than they are now. And it's just like completely not practical. <laughs> like no. 
the eight game record is still bold with a rubber ball and two fingers, like two holes. <laughs> like, I mean, it what bowling's bowling's never really been that difficult. That's to me, that's part of the problem with it. In, in some ways, like, the lanes are harder now. Not every week, of course. There was weeks, but the the pattern that you're trying to lay out is actually harder now to try and stop the balls from striking too much. Yeah. I think it happens a lot. The problem is the best bowlers know how to get to the pocket, and so the separation is even bigger. Mm, exactly. Uh, you know, when you get the fifth, sixth arrow, well, of course, if if I get dropped, which is very likely, and and were to get drafted. Uh, being on the home team, you know, yeah. I don't know if anybody would hate I was, it. I was about to say, being on the team that's bowled for the title the last four years financially yeah, yeah. seems like a good option. Yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, would you want to play for the Patriots while Brady was still the quarterback? Yeah. And as a receiver, eh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll take a ring. I'll take a, I'll take a swing and a ring this year. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed to be in the playoffs in a home game somewhere. <laughs> yeah okay yeah why not uh jason will we ever see chris and ryan bowl pba league or home and doubles uh take a lot for the league thing to happen uh we did bowl the doubles together last year and uh and he bowled pretty well uh <laughs> to see us on the tv show it's pretty difficult to be two right handers in that show same pattern as the pba league so uh, uh, that's been pretty pretty dominant. Except unless you're Bomo and and Bill, uh, it's been it's been a tough show to make. Um, Rick says, just try clear the deck and put up or shut up. It works as KPI. I don't know what KPI means, and it's a blast. I mean, clear the deck is. Am I understanding it? Is just Johnny Petraglia's scoring system rehashed? I, I believe, I, I, yeah, without knowing the minutia of all of it, I believe that's, uh, um, that's the premise. Uh, oh, key performance indicators. Okay. Thank you for educating me, Buff. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Everybody's got an. Everybody feels like their answer is the right one, and that's the thing that's cool about it. Um, whether it is or not, I I I, I don't know. Um, I I just yeah, betting for me is the answer. Like there are a lot of things that are really boring. Premier League football is really boring when there's no fans in the crowd. Yeah, that was the one thing you talked about it a lot, obviously, as a, as a huge soccer fan or football fan, if you're mm -hmm. from Europe. Uh, how much different that was, that experience was for you during the pandemic? Yeah. I mean, it was cool. It was on because there was nothing to watch. But it was like, it was like watching a training exercise. It was quite funny being able to hear the players because there are players that you know <laughs> who are like really rude. And like, but you never hear it. And the Liverpool captain, I guess, is famously loud and abusive towards players on his team, on the other teams, the officials, kind of thing. So one of his teammates on the Liverpool team, he was playing for England. And uh, he tweeted out something like, you're about to uh, meet my friend, Jordan Brian Henderson. He's very offensive, right? And about five minutes in, the referee made a call or whatever. And he's like, what the fuck are you looking at? Are you blind? And then he retweeted, there he is. There's my boy, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, when the, when the crowd's there, you never hear the players. Like, the crowd noise. So that's what I'm saying. Like, when we bowled the PBA League, when we bowled up in, um, where did we bowl? In the Washington area. Remember, like, in the COVID oh, one yeah, yeah. in Virginia? Yeah. yeah. That was kind of odd. Like, it, it, it was kind of a weird feel, wasn't it? Like, Love you it, just yeah. had uh, Richie and um, uh, Ildemaro just yelling at each other and everybody looking around like, 
who are they yelling at? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, well, I mean, in the baseball equipment, was watching the Rays and Rangers play the first yes. game. 19,000 people at a playoff game. The stadium was less than half full. It was weird. It was like I watched, I flipped over to watch it because of the Rangers. And I'm like, and then you flipped over and watched the Phillies game. You're like, this, it, like, see, you forget how much the crowd plays a part of what you think is interesting on TV. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. that's the part where we get caught up in production and we're spending all this money on stuff. And when we really need to spend money on getting butts in the seats, Agreed. Portland works because it's the energy's hot. If we can bring that energy to Wichita, to Indianapolis, you know, we used to have it at Carolier. Uh, I mean, if like whatever anybody wants to say, um, if we had it in Detroit, and you and you were to have a way in which they could educate the people to let them know that, like, we don't really care how much noise you make. Just come and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, this is this is what I'm talking about. Like, the betting aspect of it means that somebody cares who wins and who loses. Right. Nobody cares who wins and who loses in bowling. It doesn't matter what we do. Nobody gives a shit who wins and who loses. That's why the PBA League has been better in Portland because people really want Portland to win. It's actually better when they're more partisan. The Ryder Cup is fun to watch because when it's in Europe, the crowd is all in on Europe. And now it's going to Long Island in two years. It's going to be a shit show <laughs> because the American fans are going to be all in and it'll probably get a bit over the top, but it'll still be fun. Well, we talked about the Weber Cup forever. At the beginning, they were very nice to both teams. Yeah, and as it got more, the last one. Yeah, as it got more, well, they came to the U.S. the one time, and it was pretty one-sided. And then we got back to the other side, and it was finally what I thought it should have been all along, is it was very much European-focused and centric. And, and you know, it, it affected the outcome, which you wouldn't think it does. Same as golf. Like, how, why would the fans – change that but it does it does absolutely so. it's almost like rick's rick's been listening to the show before best of three <laughs> three frame matches that's what i've been saying for a long long time i'm not yeah. saying we should do it for the u.s open no but you could do it the tennis thing where you could just have eighth ninth and tenth okay that's game one game two game three you know best you could run three sets you could do it all we have to do some background to see how long it takes, but I think you could certainly make that go. Uh, yeah, they would, but that's because this is the exact point I'm trying to make, Josh. People would be educated to know that they had the Buffalo team to cheer for. Right. That's that's the whole point. We've We've made this point. Like, you guys are not reinventing the wheel. Like, we've been saying this for, like, five years or more. Like... If they had a team in Columbus, it would be madness. Like they could sell more merch. Like, but having it, having it just once a year in one place yeah. is not going to create that. Like, no, we're just, trying to get it to where there's there's more of a league competition throughout the year. We're getting everyone well, to understand it and buy in and and make space for it. But you also have to be going to the places that have teams. Well, we change the names to the places we're going. Yes. That, but, that, but that's what I'm saying. hundred yeah. percent. Like, and love Dallas should be a tournament in Dallas, but we don't. So, but, but there could be. Yeah. Wichita, Springfield, Indianapolis, Carol Lear, you know, the Hell, New Jersey, okay. whatever. Yeah. I mean, the, Buff the Buffalo team would probably be the most popular team in town because they're the only one who'd have a chance to win a championship. <laughs> I kind of I kind of use that when uh, when I was like winning some stuff. I was like, well, at least some athlete from Buffalo can win something. 
I'm I gonna mean, address this one more time. Here's my soapbox. Oh. Ron, appreciate it. They did have women's teams. However, should have never had women's teams in the PBA. They don't pay membership fees. They don't pay entry fees. They don't belong on the PBA tour. They have their own tour. They want to bowl on our tour. More than welcome to make it. Kelly, Liz, uh, Danielle, all qualified for teams. All got drafted. All were great members on their teams. Amen. That's the end of my soapbox. If you're not a I PBA would... member, no amateurs, no PBA 50s, no the people that bowl every week bowling for a living. See, Chris got so angry you made his internet stall. <laughs> I guess I did. <laughs> Bios, this isn't what it used to be, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, this is funny. You, 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 you're stalled with a really angry face as well. <laughs> oh, man, it's pissed. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. <laughs> um, anyway, um, thanks. Um, thanks for everybody for showing up. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Uh, congratulations thanks, on man. your um, on your success. Um, it was fun. It was fun watching the energy. Um, you were you 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 definitely brought it. Let's see if Chris's internet's starting to work again. He's trying. He's back ish. Ish. <laughs> All right. I think we're good. No, maybe not. But uh, but like I say, I would love it if we could have the European team bowl together. Um, I don't think that it would be. Um, I, I don't think that we'd have a, like a huge necessarily advantage ranking wise or anything else. But uh, yeah, it would be fun. Um, but it looks like Chris has crashed again. So I will uh, I will see the show out. Um, thank you to all of the uh, brands who support us. And if you get the opportunity, please support some of them. Um, Ryan is a DB8 guy. So um, thank you to uh, Brunswick for continuing to support professional bowling. We appreciate you, even though we're on the storm side. Um, so... From uh, from us to uh, all the fans, uh, thanks again. Uh, we would like to thank Storm, Rotogrip, 900 Global, uh, Vice Turbo, uh, 3G Shoes, uh, Coolwick, Bowlers Mart, Platinum Ford, Lightning Strikes, and Fire Lake Bowling Center. With that, Bills Mafia, we will see you uh, next week. Thanks again. Um, see you around sometime, Sim. All right. And, uh, yeah. Take it easy, guys. See you later. All right, brother.